Okay, so making a drum sound in ES2. Let's start with the kick. So I've got a kick pattern just programmed in. So we can tweak the sound whilst hearing it. So first thing we've got to think whether it's going to be a polyphonic or a monophonic instrument. So with a kick drum, you can't play chords, so it's not going to be poly, which means playing two notes at once. Mono is one note, and legato is notes joined together. So for a kick, mono is going to be the most suitable because you can't play chords on it. In terms of waveforms, we've got your sine wave, which is quite bassy sounding, quite smooth. Your pulse wave, which is a bit more aggressive. Square wave, much hollower. Your saw wave, which is kind of like spiky string-like sounds. And your triangle wave, which is sort of a blend between the square and the sine. A bit smoother than the uh, more aggressive waveforms, but not as uh, bassy and harmonically free as the sine. So for kick, I'm going to use a sine wave, and I'm going to pitch it down an octave, so 12 semitones. So we're at a nice bassy starting point. Put the blend all the way to the sine wave because I'm not using any other oscillators. Now, the key thing about making any drum sound is to set up your pitch drop via the router. So I'm going to select pitch one as my target because I'm going to be tuning this down as the sound progresses. The source or the controller is going to be an envelope. Now we're already using envelope three for the shape of the sound. So we can choose envelope one or envelope two. Really doesn't matter which, but for this, I'm gonna use envelope one as it's a little bit simpler. Only having an attack and a decay setting. And I'll turn the modulation up to full. So we've got a bit of a clicker in the sound now. Because it is rapidly decreasing in pitch. If I want to make that more noticeable, I'll pull the decay up. For a kick, somewhere around 100 to 140 milliseconds for the decay is about right. That sounds right. Okay, for the actual envelope free of the sound, so the shape, Attack, how quickly it starts. Decay, how quickly it takes to go to its resting point. Sustain, how long the note stays in that resting point. And release is how long the note lasts after you take your finger off the keyboard. So with a drum, it's gonna have a very short release and very short sustain. We're gonna have a fast attack, but not too fast, so there's an audible click to the sound. And then we're just gonna use the decay control how long we want the note to last for. Don't want too much of that tone in the sound, so I'm going to take the sustain down. But a touch more release to stop the click. Somewhere around there sounds right for what I want. Finally, we'll use a filter. So this is like a EQ. You've got a choice of low pass and high pass. Low pass will reduce the uh, highs in the sounds, making it more bassy. Whereas high pass will reduce the bass in the sounds, making it more trebly. For a kick, it's a bassy instrument. So I'm gonna use a low pass filter and just chop a little bit of those highs off. in a touch of resonance for some tone. If you go too much of this, you get a click. A squeaky sound we don't want. So, around about halfway. That is our basic kick drum sound. If you want to go a little bit further, you can add stuff like distortion. Off. Get a bit 
a punch out of it. You could also look at putting in um, an octave below with the sine wave, possibly uh, considering adding a little bit of noise to the top. There's a few alternatives you can try, but that's our step one of making a drum sound.